Okay, so we're ready to finish up the back inside of this album. And I've cut my pieces. I'm going to give you the measurements. Just a second here. Let me move the album out of the way. Grab my scoreboard. Okay. So inside back cover, we're going to have a left flap. So we cut one at nine and a half by eight. And we're going to put the nine and a half in at the top and score at a half inch. And then I'm going to go ahead and fold and burnish that. So like I said, this is the left flap like that. Okay, and then we're going to have a right flap, which is smaller, which is a five by seven and a half. And we put the seven and a half in at the top, score at a half inch. Go ahead and fold that, burnish. So that's going to be the right flap like this, okay? And then I want a flat pocket. That means no scoring on the pocket at all. So it is uh, two inches by seven to go on that little flap. So let's go ahead and get this in the book. And then I will decide on my pattern paper for this remaining section of the album. So let's open this up to the back right here. So like I said, this flap is going to go right here. And you want to make sure that it doesn't go over the fold line or the uh, spine area here. So we're going to make sure we're just off of that just a tiny bit. So let me get my glue going. Okay, so put your glue on that half inch attachment flap back here on the back. Go ahead and line that up. Make sure it is not over that fold line. And that it's straight here on the bottom and on the top. So I'm going to put this black piece under here real quick. Make sure I can see that it's all the way there and there. Okay. Oops. And now burnish. So that kind of slipped a little bit there. Make sure I'm where it needs to be. There we go. Pull it up just a tiny bit. I was down a little bit too low here on this bottom edge. There we go. That's better. So now I'm going to burnish that in. So that's where that flap goes. And then the other one, the small one, is going to go here on the right kind of centered and you know me I always eyeball it so I'm just going to put the glue on the half inch back side of the half inch hinge here line this up along the edge not over the edge just back it up a little bit and I'm going to center it what looks good to me burnish that down there okay so there's that one like that now this flat pocket is going to go on but we're going to add the pattern paper first so it goes there so this is pretty simple pretty flat uh, area here but we can put a lot of pictures in here and this is going to go in here so let me decide on my paper and also I do want a magnet here so I'm going to use the last of my basic gray these are some that um, we're in another album or something I changed my mind on, I think. Okay, so I'm going to have to add my own tape to them. So this one here goes. They're super sticky. This one here goes there, and I'm going to tape it down. Because like I said, I used them on another project and then changed my mind and Pulled them off and now they're all gunky. So that one goes there. Make sure that matches it. So I need a little piece of tape to 
between these like this. Okay, and now when I close this down, I can press it down and leave it in place. So now, got our magnets. I'm ready to decide on my patterned paper and get that ready for this last section of our album. I decided to go with the Kenga stripe here in the hearts, but then pull in the uh, red check from this side over to here. I also put in the strips here of red check. These are from the 8 by 8 collection. So this one is 7 and 7 eighths by 3 eighths. And this one is, uh, can you see it here on the back right there? Uh, 7 and 7 eighths by a quarter of an inch to cover those uh, hinge sections there. So I went ahead and glued these down. I have the mats in red. I haven't done the inside back sides yet. This is the front like this. So um, I didn't write these down. This mat here, the red is eight and seven eighths by seven and seven eighths. So the pattern is eight and three quarters by seven and three quarters. And then this one is um, six and seven eighths. By four and seven eighths, so six and three quarters by four and three quarters on the pattern paper. And then this one in here, I did go ahead and glue this one down. Is since it's bigger, is 10 inch mat by seven and seven eighths. So that's what that looks like so far. Now we're ready for the pocket. So here I cut red mat for this seven inch pocket that is six and seven eighths by one and seven eighths. And then I use the back side, which is the stripe, and that is. Um, what did I say? Six, seven, six and three quarters by one and three quarters. And so this is a flat pocket and it's going to fit right here. So we just put glue on each short end on the back side here. And along the bottom edge. To seal this up. Okay, and then we put it on. And you can move it up a little bit if you want. I think I'm going to bring it up just a tiny bit like that. Just to, you know, for a different look. It doesn't have to be flush on the bottom unless you want it to be. And then I'm going to burnish it right there. Burnish, burnish, burnish. And then this one extra mat that I cut just tucks in there. Of course, I can put more in there as I'm doing stuff. So that's where we're at on that. So I'm going to decide what I want on the back side here. And then I'll be wrapping this all up by doing the cover and adding in a few maybe little details, decorating details in there if I want to add some of the um, cut aparts and stuff. So Leah, let me decide on that and I'll be back with that. So here on this little flat pocket, I have the four by four natural cardstock mat that I had shown you earlier. And then on top of it, I decided to add, I take a scrap of the craft cardstock and I cut that down to three and seven eighths by three and seven eighths and made a little photo mat out of that. And so that just tucks right there in that pocket. And then on the back side, well, I did the inside. I'm gonna give you all the details of that. So, um, so here on the back side of this right flap here, I cut a piece of the red Chinese six and seven eighths by four and seven eighths and the craft six and three quarters by four and three quarters. So we did a photo mat there. And then here on the inside of this, so I cut a piece of Chinese red 10 inches wide by seven and seven eighths tall. So that goes here on this section underneath all this, these two, these flaps. And then red gingham, I cut red gingham out at five and three eighths wide by seven and three quarters tall. 
and matted it here. Then a blue sky is a little photo mat that's four and three eighths wide by three and a half tall. And um, I did a natural here at four and a half wide by seven tall and a craft that's four and three eighths wide by six and seven eighths tall for this mat. And then this section down here, I did the pink and blue stripe from a scrap that's four and three eighths wide by four and one eighth tall. This is all in the cutting guide, but it may be in different order. So you'll just really have to look at it. Here on the back side of the uh, left flap, I did the pink and blue stripes, the back side of Kanga and the hearts. This is seven and three quarters wide by seven and seven eighths tall. And then the red check is a one inch by seven and seven eighths tall to uh, kind of bring it all together. And then red for the mat here is four and a quarter by six and a quarter with the blue sky on top, four and an eighth wide by six and an eighth tall. And then the little mats here, natural is two and seven eighths wide by three and a half tall. And the craft is two and three quarters wide by three and three eighths tall for this inside flap there. So that's what that looks like. For the large photo mat insert that goes in your base page sleeve, cut one piece of craft cardstock that is nine and one sixteenth of an inch wide by seven and five eighths tall and round the corners, and then cut two pieces out of the dandelion paper that are nine inches wide by seven and a half inches tall to mat the front and the back side. I use both on each side. And then I decided on this, and once I put it down, that I wanted to, to kind of uh, break it up a little bit. So I did cut one piece of the natural cardstock, one and a quarter wide by seven and a half tall and rounded two corners to match. And I did round the corners on this mat. And then I cut a piece of the red gingham at one and, uh, yeah, one and one eighth wide by seven and three eighths tall, rounded that and just matted it like that to get that look. And then I added the mats. So the craft ones, you have one at three and an eighth by five and five eighths and one at three and a quarter by three and a quarter two at three and an eighth by three and an eighth and one at four and an eighth by four and five eighths. Now yours can be different sizes depending on scraps that you have. So but that's what I had. Then the uh, natural cardstock, uh, one at three by four and a half, one at three and an eighth by three and an eighth, two at three by three and one at four and four and a half. So that's how I did that. And then I added this little tuck spot here. I thought that was really cute. And the way it goes in, it goes in pretty even with the page. I wanted just a slight pull out. So I cut a piece of, um, let's see, my ruler craft that was one inch wide by it's a scrap, about three inches. Scored it in half on the one inch side, glued that, I rounded the two corners and glued that down, and then I hand cut. I mean, I cut out two pieces of the dot, blue dot, at three-eighths of an inch by two and seven-eighths. And I did hand round the corners because I'm that small. It's hard to use the corner punch and glued it on front and back. So that makes that. Um, and then it goes inside. Turn it here to this page here, right behind the honeycomb. I finally found it. <laughs> because it got this build up here. So it's in between this build up area and the front of here. And so that just slides in like that. And that gives you extra places for pictures. I push it in as far as it'll go. So that just sticks out just a tiny bit there on the side. So that is the portrait sleeve. So now I'm gonna go through it off camera and um, Take some scraps. I have different size scraps and things for mats. Uh, round corner around some mats. Let me cut some down. Um, add some of the cut aparts and things, different elements for decorating. Finish it up on the inside before I proceed to the front cover. I have uh, finished the inside of my album. I've added in some of the cut-aparts and 
made some tags or rather photo mats out of um, scraps of my paper. And I'll briefly go over those with you after I finish the cover here. So I have my elements cut for this and I'm going to show you, give you all those. But first, let me set these aside. First, I'm going to add a ribbon closure because when I do stand it up, sometimes it does kind of gap open. Not bad. You don't have to put a, a ribbon closure if you don't want to. But I am going to add one after the fact. Sometimes I do this a lot when I don't know for sure if I want one or not. So what I'm going to do, I cut two pieces of ribbon. And this is kind of a golden yellow from Country Craft Creations. I cut two pieces that are 12, about 18, 19 inches long. I did crinkle them up and I tied a knot on the end. So I'm going to open flatten this one out and about in the center here I'm going to put some glue let's let's see let's make this a little more scientific maybe uh, that is eight so about at four I'm put my glue on this edge Flatten that out, and you could do it with tape if you wanted to, because I've got it uh, patterned paper. I'm just going to, to glue it right there and get that on there, and then I'll be building up my other elements on it. Okay, now I'm going to flip it over, and the same thing, lay out my ruler, and at about the 4-inch mark, Put my glue, grab that other piece, the end with, without the knot, and I'm just going to flatten it out and attach it on. Now then to cover this up, I did take one of the cutter parts with the poo and the balloon on the yellow uh, background with the white flowers, and then I glued it to some of the cardstock, the natural cardstock, and I just Oh, yeah, fussy cut around it. It's not perfect. I can't fussy cut perfect. And if you can't, just don't worry about it because it still looks cute. And then I'm going to put some glue right here. And I just glue this piece down over my ribbon. and burnish it and secure it in place. So that's going to take care of that ribbon there. And so you can always add a closure after you finish the album and you see, uh-oh, I need something to keep it closed. So there's that. On the back, did I do it upside down? Oh, I did. I better quickly. Good thing I checked. <laughs> okay, just move this. Up. Where's my tool? Just to lift it up real quick and flip it over very carefully. You don't want to tear anything because this, yeah, we don't want it upside down. This is the back. What was the thinking? <laughs> so get it back on there. No harm done. Burnish it down. If I need to put more glue, I will, but I think it has plenty still there. Just burnish it and seal that up. So pay attention to directions of your piece that you're gluing down. Okay. Super cute. So now we'll turn it back over and we'll build up on the front. So what I wanted to do was a lot of the different papers pull all this out. I have the yellow that we already did at the first with the natural cover wrap, the yellow, and then the check. And so I wanted this. This is the back side of a 12 by 12, one of the cut apart sheets. I only used one set of the cut, -a, cut aparts. So I love this print and I wanted it here on this. Now don't worry that this isn't covered because I have a piece that goes over that. So I want to build this up. But first... Now look at this. 
I think I'm going to put a magnet underneath. I like to sometimes add magnets to my uh, decorative flowers. If you want to take them off later, you can. So I haven't used these yet. These are the new um, tonic magnets. Let me open these up. This is the first time I have used these. So it comes with these little stickers because they don't have adhesive on them. So let me pop out two. Snap them together. Pull off a sticker here. I guess that's what that is. sticky on it. There we go. So you've got to um, stick it down in there. Okay, so I'm going to lay it right there for now. So I'm going to position this sort of where I want it, kind of, to get an idea. And this is my flower piece. So, about just mark it with my finger. Get it approximate. I'm going to stick a magnet right there. Separate it. And we'll go ahead and glue this one down. Glue on that magnet around it. Okay, burnish this down. Then the next piece is going to go kind of centered. The reason the magnet goes under, I would put it under this one because this one might not cover it. So I've heard that the magnets are really strong, so I'm hoping so. And then I'm going to look at this and make sure my bees are going the way I want them to, and I'm going to center this okay now then I'm going to go ahead and attach a magnet to the back of my flower. So I'll peel up this backing, drop the magnet, make sure it's the right direction. Okay. And I'm going to put some glue on this back here because I'm going to make sure it does stick. But not only that, I punched out this circle of paper here to cover that magnet so it makes sure it stays on. So I put glue on the whole back of this circle. Make sure I'm staying in camera here for you. And attach it over the, the magnet. Now 
So this piece here, I made it out of some leftover uh, ribbon, kind of a beige or cream colored open weave from Country Craft Creations. Some of this seam binding ribbon and then a little bit of the twine. And then this flower I had, I did several of them, but I'm only using one for right now. Um, I pulled the gold center out and glued a little black one because I wanted to, a black bead because I kind of wanted it to look like those. So we got that on and it does stick down good. So that's good. I'll fluff up the flower some. Okay. So that worked great with that magnet. That was super easy. Then I have the piece with the poo and the honeycombs and I'm going to make it kind of off center a little bit or do I want it centered what do you think let's do centered because of the bees initially I was going to do it off center but I think I like it better centered so we'll glue this on underneath that bow cut those bees Okay, then this piece I made, um, the natural cardstock is three and a half by one and a half, and I stubbed the corners, and the pattern paper is from the eight by eight, and it's uh, three and three eighths wide by one and three eighths tall, and uh, stubbed it, and then this was one of the cut aparts, and then I just glued it to the natural cardstock and fussy cut around it, and then I glued one of the little flowers on the end. Because this is going to go here over the ribbon. This is a decorative piece and it just kind of fits right there. Make sure it's straight. And it says, it never hurts to keep looking for sunshine. Now, if you were making this more for a baby album, you could just, you know, put a name here. You could cut a name out or print it out on a computer, the baby's name or the birth date or something like that. Okay, so that's the cover. I did have more of these flowers, but I think, that's probably plenty, unless I want to balance it out and maybe add one or two more. But I think I like it like that. So then this will tie. Just like that. And if it's too long, well, then you can just trim this off some, which I think I will do. I'll just tie a knot I'll snip that off and save that ribbon if I want it for something else, another project, or I put it in a bowl or something. Okay, so there's what it looks like on the front. So I'll go through it real quick in just a bit with you to show you some of the photo mats I did on the inside. Okay, so let's take a quick peek at the um, inside of the album now that it's finished. I will have a separate walkthrough video of this if you want to watch it in more detail. But anyway, here on the cover, this is removable. I love doing that because if you don't want to mess that up or you want your album cover flatter but you still like the pretty on there this is a great way to do it with the magnets so it's nice and contained so you just set that aside and of course we have this one little flower here but that's not a big deal so if you like it plain like that then you don't have to put the frou-frou on and I've left it untied real quick so we open it up here on the left we have this pocket and I added a bit of the matching ribbon open weave ribbon here to the side photo mat that 
that I've added this. Now, I will try to put all these measurements in there. Of course, use your scraps that you have. And then here on the back, these were scraps as well. Love how that turned out. That just slides right in there, and you just push it all the way in. And you've got your pull tabby here with the ribbon. That makes it a little easier. Then we've got the frame here that you can replace this little image with if you wanted to. This flips back. Lots of places for photos here. And then this is the single page. So here on this side in this little tuck pocket, I have a little tag I made. I did add the yellow ribbon after I finished the tag. Before I finished up, I glued a one of my extra flowers to this. I did add these two uh, leftover cardstock scraps. And so this pocket opens up. And then you can tuck photos or more of your cut aparts in there. So this closes up. And then all of these just kind of tuck in, kind of give it a to hold everything down. Whoops, I didn't get enough glue on that. So that just make sure I'm not poking it through. And then here in this pocket, we have a bigger photo mat. So you can put a nice size photo back here. You could also put photos here on this section and I just tucked some of the uh, cut aparts in there and I cut a scrap of the paper rounded the corners and made a little flat pocket right there I think that's really cute and of course a photo can go there so that's like that and then we have this mat here now you could put photo mats on here I decided to leave the map on the front and the back like this so that's really fun part of the album of uh, the paper collection. So this flips open and here we have this magnetic and I added a piece of that open weave that ribbon and a little bit of the yellow so that it can just easier to pull open because of the magnet and then this does slide out so you have all these little spots for photos if you wanted to. I left this open so you can tuck the photo in. So that just slides under this belly band, this decorative belly band, which I love the paper. Of course, you could put photos if you wanted to cover that up. Then this here opens with the tie. And this cut apart, I just put the edges around it. Then this lifts up. So we have a loose photo mat and a fixed photo mat up there. And then I tie this back up so it doesn't flop open when I show you the waterfall section. So this lifts up. We have photo mats the top here and then we have our photo mats and I left them plain on the back or our waterfall. For those. And you could add an extra two if you wanted to on that as well. At least one more for sure. And then into this is the sleeve page and so I put photo mats on this side and also on the back. Kind of got a scrapbook look to it. Scrapbook page. So that goes all the way in. You got the tab to pull. And then on the back side here, we flip open here. And then we have this going like this. So we have some extra mats in here. I made a little flat tuck spot with that cut apart. These flip open like that. Lots of room for photos there. And that just closes up held with a magnet and I did add a flower here. Uh, this is one of the um, journaling cards. So I matted it to the craft card stock. This is a booklet. You can put photos back here or you can just open it up and there's photos for that. And this just flips open. It's got a place where you can do journaling or some small photos like that. So close this up. And then over here on the back inside page, we have a pocket here with these photo mats. So you can see this is left where you can tuck your photo in. And this flips open. So I have a loose photo mat here it's behind the owl. And then I have, I used one of the journal cards and uh, made a flat pocket with that and then from my scraps, I was able to corner around these scraps and make a fun place for some more photos. And then this lifts up. And so we have these mats here and then this here. 
So that's my little um, adventures. Whoops. Pooh's Friends album. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Like I said, there'll be a separate walkthrough. Uh, again, I'm sharing all these elements on it. So if you just need to watch that really quick and then come check out this tutorial. Thanks again for watching. I do hope that you have subscribed to my channel so you'll see what my next project is. And as always, shop at countrycraftcreations.com. And again, subscribe, click the bell so you'll be notified of my next project. Thanks, everybody. Happy crafting. Bye-bye.